Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detail with a forecast update for the first day of winter, Sunday, June 1st, 2025. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing, but let's get stuck straight into things this morning. A recap on the heavy rainfall across southeast Queensland, more rainfall to come for southeast Queensland and northeast New South Wales, and plenty of rainfall on the way for southwestern WA. So let's st get stuck into the northeast of New South Wales and just in recap, southeast Queensland, where overnight some heavy rainfall accumulations petered out from yesterday afternoon. Falls were widespread, but between the 20 to 80 millimetre mark, in fact, across southeast Queensland, and with the heaviest rainfall accumulations around the Mount Tambourine area, north of the Gold Coast, as well up around the Coomera and the Logan City area, well, we had falls between that 20 to 80 millimetre mark quite widespread through those regions. The heaviest rainfall accumulations were in the high 70s, even into the early 80s. A couple of showers still lingering around here and there, but we do have a little bit more rainfall coming through, uh, likely tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow evening. Those showers will continue across southeast Queensland's coastline throughout today. They'll pick up a little bit through tomorrow afternoon. But as you saw in the start of the video, that cloud band moving through interior Australia is going to wrap itself up into a bit of a weak low pressure system. And then we're going to likely see some convective activity uh, associated with that uh, developing along the southeast Queensland coastline into the northeast of New South Wales. I don't know what just happened there. I clicked the wrong arrows by the looks of things. And this low pressure system here, combining with a bit of a trough, another low pressure system just offshore from the coastline is likely to give way to some pretty significant convective based thunderstorm activity through tomorrow night and into early uh, Tuesday morning. Likely to see some very heavy rainfall accumulations out of this, if not some pretty meaty thunderstorms also likely into the northeast of New South Wales. Now the good news is we're not expecting a multiple day rainfall event out of this, it's just going to uh, occur over a couple of hours, so significant rainfall accumulations are also not a possibility at this point in time. Like I'm talking uh, high triple figure rainfall accumulations beyond 150 millimetres are not expected whatsoever from this, so you can breathe a sigh of relief if you have been in a flood impacted area with this rainfall here, not expected to result in flooding. And it's also happening a little bit further the north and those very badly flood impacted areas through the uh, mid north coast it's going to be more sort of northern rivers and even in towards southeast queensland based but certainly some significant weather coming through monday night tomorrow night and into early tuesday morning and now there is a good chance of severe thunderstorms out of this we had a look at this in yesterday's forecast update but convective available potential energy values which is the amount of energy that thunderstorms and con convective activity can make the most of to produce some gnarly severe thunderstorm conditions is going to be quite high comparatively speaking for this time of the year Whilst I'm not expecting a full-blown severe thunderstorm outbreak out of this system here, I do expect some very heavy rainfall to develop as a, as a result through Monday night into Tuesday uh, morning, and we'll likely see some pretty good rainfall accumulations here and there, with heavy rainfall being the main threat, and associated with the strongest thunderstorms, locally damaging winds for exposed, elevated, and coastal locations, which could exceed 90 kilometers an hour in locations. It's definitely too late on in the year to see large hailstones be a possibility at this point in time. Small hailstones, always a possibility through southeast Queensland and northeast New South Wales, no matter the thunderstorm, no matter the time of the year. But at this point in time, large hailstones don't look like a possibility, just considering that there's not enough instability and convective uh, available potential energy in the atmosphere for thunderstorms to make the most of in order to fire out some large hailstones. We can breathe a sigh of relief there, not that that was ever going to be a concern. But healthy rainfall accumulations nonetheless are expected. I'd love to see what the convective forecast models were to make of this system here, but it's not quite in their uh, range at this point in time. But Monday night into Tuesday morning, certainly some good weather coming through for the northeast of New South Wales. It's going to be very isolated, pretty much to the coastline of the northeast of New South Wales. Widespread rainfall accumulations between the 20 to 50 millimetre mark and the heaviest falls around the Grafton, Yamba and Lismore area could be up pushing 80 or 90 millimetres in some locations. Again, quick moving rainfall not expected to persist for a long period of time and it's going to come through in intense dumps. We're not expecting really heavy rainfall accumulations out of it that will persist for hours upon hours and triple figure rainfall accumulations at this point in time are a very big unlikely factor at this point in time. We're not expecting those very heavy rainfall accumulations that we have been getting used to across New South Wales and Queensland over the last couple of months. Also falls between the 5 to 20 millimetre mark have spread out across northern parts of New South Wales. Some good rainfall accumulations possible around Moree, uh, Tamworth, Glen Innes, and then inland out towards Lightning Ridge as well. We might be seeing some good rainfall accumulations there with possible uh, rainfall accumulations into the single digits as far out as Burke, Hobart, Wilcannia, Broken Hill, and even down towards Mildura we might be seeing some good rainfall accumulations through here. Again, good rainfall accumulations, 5 to 20 millimetres. It's nothing crazy, but it is rainfall that'll certainly cop on the chin there with an with open arms and a big smile, that's for sure, coming through Monday night into early Tuesday morning. 
But yeah, interesting stuff, that's for sure. Out of season, severe thunderstorm possible, uh, severe thunderstorm outbreak possible across the northeast of New South Wales into the southeast of Queensland. Certainly some good thunderstorms coming through, that's for sure. Into the south, uh, southeastern parts of Australia as well, we do now have some good signals of rainfall coming through into the second week of June, and that really is now beginning to be, uh, become apparent beyond about the 5th or the 6th of June, when we do have some good rainfall accumulations now in the forecast, especially from the European forecast model spread out across Victoria, South Australia, and especially into the the northern coast of Tasmania. Now, I would just like to preface this by saying that this is a brand new addition to the forecast model, and we had this on yesterday's forecast run, but it's now really starting to get talked up by the forecast models. So take it with a heavy pinch of salt. Generally, when I make forecasts, I like to see about three or four days of congruency, especially if we're looking a little bit more long range, which is what we're doing right here. But considering the fact that it is now, uh, we're expecting this type of rainfall to be quite an apparent thing across the southern parts of Australia, I thought that it was worth mentioning at this point in time. Uh, but yeah, we do have a little bit of good rainfall coming in for the southern parts of Australia, especially for drought impacted areas through South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania, falls between 25 to 100 millimetres possible in the uh, 10 to 14 day period, into the uh, 5 to 14 day period by the looks of things beyond about Thursday the 5th of May, right out uh, June rather, out to about Sunday the 15th of May, uh, June rather, that's what the forecast models are suggesting at this point in time. So let's break that down for you right now. As everybody's aware, strong cold front activity coming through into the southwest of Western Australia throughout tomorrow, and that's expected then uh, trail into South Australia and Victoria through Thursday and into Friday. Relatively good rainfall accumulations expected through Thursday and Friday from the main frontal band coming into Victoria on Thursday or Friday for Victoria, Thursday for South Australia. And falls could be up to around the 25 or 30 millimetre mark through Thursday and Friday. Dry conditions expected Saturday morning before another strong cold front sweeps up from the south. This one here is actually going to be quite strong and will bring a vigorous polar air mass in behind it, which will pre present the opportunity for plenty of showers to come through and towards South Australia and Victoria. And also snow down to some lower elevations through Sunday and into Monday through Victoria, New South Wales and into Tasmania as well. Showers and storms continuing through Monday and into Tuesday and that will give way to some healthy rainfall accumulations, especially through the eastern half of Victoria and then another strong cold front sweeping up from the south and then moving into South Australia through Thursday and Friday the 12th and 13th of June respectively and that will likely present some good rainfall accumulations here and there as well. So all in all plenty of frontal activity coming through about four different fronts on four different occasions here. We've got the first one coming through Thursday and Friday, then another one coming through Saturday night into Sunday morning, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday once again, with four different cold fronts coming through at four different times across South Australia, Victoria, and Tasmania, and that's what's going to give way to these pretty healthy rainfall accumulations at this point in time on the forecast. Very, very good indeed. Very excited to be able to present on this. Drought impacted communities will be rejoicing at this news here. Don't get your hopes up if you're a little bit further north. Rainfall accumulations there shouldn't exceed 25 millimetres once you get north of a line of between St. Juno and Port Augusta and then in towards New South Wales. Rainfall accumulations aren't going to be anything too significant, but for the most part, farmers along the Eyre Peninsula and the York Peninsula can expect anywhere between 30 to 50 millimetres of rainfall. Slightly more rainfall, up to 75 millimetres possible around Adelaide into the Flinders Ranges and again up to 75 millimetres possible into the southeastern corner of South Australia and falls between 30 to 60 millimetres also possible across the southern half of Victoria. Falls between 20 to 50 millimetres possible into the northern half of Victoria and then into the high country of Victoria we could be seeing falls up to 100 millimetres out there and widespread falls exceeding 20 to 50 millimetres across much of Tasmania and exceeding 100 millimetres in some locations especially across the northwest of Tasmania some good rainfall accumulations expected there quite normal stuff at this time of the year but all in all very healthy rainfall accumulations very excited to see this as a factor on the forecast now and it's going to do wonders for the extreme drought conditions extending across South Australia into Victoria and Tasmania and as you can see on the drought monitoring map, if we push this right forward out towards Monday the 9th, this map can be a bit misleading at times, but this rainfall certainly looks like it's going to do wonders for drought conditions and drought impacted communities across South Australia and much of Victoria and Tasmania as well. Still a few concerns into the southern half of Victoria. They're really battling some significant drought conditions at this point in time, so it's going to take a lot of rainfall to quench their thirst, but it does look like overall we're going to see enough rainfall to provide some good drought relief across much of South Australia, parts of Victoria, and into Tasmania as well. So certainly something that I would be getting a little bit excited for at this point in time. It is kind of a saving grace, whether it's come a bit too late for uh, agricultural communities, it's still a little bit too hard to tell, but any rainfall is good rainfall and they will take it with open arms. Let me know what the drought-like conditions are 
in your location through South Australia and Victoria and let me know how this rainfall is going to affect the situation for good or for bad. It doesn't look like the rainfall is going to be coming through at any point in time where it's going to be too heavy uh, and it's going to cause uh, washouts and uh, massive water gouges through much of the agricultural community. So this rainfall here overall looks like it is going to be very healthy and much needed falls across South Australia, Victoria and into Tasmania. One place that is not going to be short of rainfall, that's for sure, is going to be the southwest of Western Australia. Some significant rainfall is on the cards now over the next uh, kind of 10 to 14 day weather period. We're expecting plenty of rainfall to pipe up from tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow evening, and that's going to persist all through next week until about Friday afternoon when the rainfall will finally clear. We're expecting one kind of big burst of rainfall across the southwest or much of the southwest, which is going to come through in that initial cold front band coming through Monday afternoon into Monday evening, depending on whereabouts you are. And then after that, it's just going to be showers through Tuesday. Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and into Friday morning, which is why we're expecting significant rainfall accumulations along the coast and not so significant rainfall accumulations further inland, which uh, I guess is kind of two sides to a coin at this point in time. We'd really like to see some good rainfall through the wheat belt, but the coast is also de in desperate need of some good rainfall here. So this rainfall looks like it is going to kickstart the coastal regions uh, with some very good winter rainfall. Unfortunately, though, it is probably a little bit more needed out into the wheat belt regions. But let's break this down for you right now. So currently over in the southwest of Western Australia, we're sandwiched between low, two low pressure systems, one of which has been dragged very far south into the Great Australian Bight and is now moving well to the south of Tasmania and Macquarie Island. And the second one here is developing quite nicely offshore from the southwest of Western Australia. It is a mean looking system, that's for sure. And it's really expected to get its act together over the next couple of hours. It's approaching the southwest of WA pretty slowly, all things considered. Through tonight and into tomorrow, we're expecting the main shower band at the front to begin dragging moisture up from the Luan Cone and into the Indian Ocean, which is going to present some very heavy showers and a pretty significant uh, prefrontal band coming through on Monday afternoon. It'll finally clip the southwest capes through Monday afternoon and then into the Perth metro area through early Monday evening where widespread showers and thunderstorms are expected and falls between 10 to 40 millimetres can be expected through much of the southwest. Heavy falls through the southwest capes are expected and then moderate falls expected through the wheat belt as well where we could be seeing falls between 5 to 25 millimetres out there. Perth, like I said, could see anywhere up towards 40 millimetres of rainfall from this main frontal system. And then beyond that, it is is just going to be showers upon showers upon showers upon showers upon showers. Showers streaming in through Tuesday and Wednesday. They'll be at their worst through Wednesday night and into Thursday morning as the main low pressure system passes just to the south of WA and we're expecting heavy rainfall at times through Wednesday and into Thursday. The rainfall will then begin to ease off through Thursday. We're expecting lighter showers through Thursday and then showers pretty much clearing through Friday morning and into Saturday across much of the southwest as a strong high pressure ridge builds in this system's place but nonetheless some very heavy rainfall accumulations are still and anticipated. I'm seeing a lot of, I don't want to say crap in a YouTube video, but that's essentially what it is on Facebook. People questioning how much rainfall is on the forecasts because we've seen this type of uh, stuff here on the forecast modelling before and it never really tends to eventuate across the southwest of Western Australia. But I'm here to provide you the reasoning as to why this rainfall is different and why it will eventuate exactly how the forecast models are suggesting at this point in time. So like I explained a couple of minutes ago, you've got two parts to frontal systems across the southwest of WA. You've got the main cloud band that comes through and that's that big line of clouds that goes into the southwest and then uh, wallops the coastline with those damaging wind threads and you know that type of stuff there and then that clears and then a couple of hours behind it you just get speckled showers coming through on the radar which persist for between 12 to 36 hours and again generally non-severe weather in there but that's where the most significant rainfall generally is the heavy falls can be embedded in those showers we can see small hailstones the difference between this system here, they've both got the frontal systems, but the shower band isn't lasting for 12 hours. It's going to be lasting close to 100 hours in the wake of this system here. So plenty more rainfall is expected to pile on, plenty more showers are expected to pile on. And as such, that's why we're expecting the significant rainfall accumulations. Up to 100 millimetres it is possible along the coastline as far north as Durian Bay with falls into the triple figure mark around the Perth metro area. Also expected high 100 millimetre rainfall accumulations as high as 150 or even 175 millimetres expected down towards Mandra, Waruna, uh, Harvey and Dwelling Up Way. Rainfall accumulations up to 150 millimetres also expected for both Bunbury and Bustleton and then down towards the southwest capes, Augusta, Margaret River, Dunsborough and Yelling Up. Rainfall accumulations will be lighter along the south coast but still up to 100 millimetres expected down there. And the Perth hills could copper drenching as well with rainfall accumulations as high as 150 millimetres also possible around historically one of the wettest locations in WA that being of course Bickley generally speaking they run away with the rainfall accumulations up there and I expect that this system here will be no different 
We're not expecting severe weather to uh, develop out of this weather system here unless it comes in the form of heavy rainfall, but this rainfall here isn't going to cause major flooding across the southwest of Western Australia. I kid you not, I, I very rarely see major rivers in the southwest of Western Australia, even at the minor flood level, let alone at moderate or major. I've never in my uh, nearly nine years of looking at weather models and weather maps seen the river levels exceed uh, uh, moderate flooding across the southwest of Western Australia. We still can see some pretty significant flooding of all those gullies that flow through the wheat belt. And at this point in time, that looks like we could be seeing a bit of a possibility there, especially through the central wheat belt around York, Northam and Beverley uh, through uh, Monday night and into Tuesday morning. Some very significant water contributions are expected out there. But again, I just don't think that this cold front is going to go severe warm, which for the amount of rainfall that's coming through is going to catch a lot of people off guard. This is a no-brainer forecast as well with the very warm sea temperatures. I feel like the Bureau of Meteorology is going to hit a home run with this one and same with all the other weather models and myself. It's a very easy uh, frontal system to forecast. It's just getting a lot of kind of, I guess, backlash because we've never seen this type of rainfall accumulations uh, happen across the southwest of Western Australia from a winter uh, cold front sort of situation here. Beyond that, there'll be more rainfall in, in the second week of June now towards the third week of June as well across the southwest. But apart from that, no real rainfall occurring across the northern half of Australia as we would expect for this time of the year. Interesting stuff and certainly plenty of weather to keep us on our toes across Australia through Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania and of course over in Western Australia as well. It's kind of only the Northern Territory that's missing out at this point in time. Tomorrow I'll go into a detailed forecast of those cold fronts moving through into the southeast parts of Western Australia and also into the southwestern parts of Western Australia as well. Uh, plenty more details still to come over the next couple of days as well. So sub subscribe if you haven't already. And of course a special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not run the show without them their support is much appreciated as well but that is all for me today and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye